providing primary, secondary and tertiary education for the nation's vulnerable youth. The FAD program has helped extensively in allowing me to achieve my academic goals. The PATH program has paid for my bus fare, so now I'm able to attend school regularly. They are just two of many beneficiaries that speak highly of the PATH program. You can view the full feature in a little while. Hello, I am Audrey Williams, and thanks for tuning in to Jamaica Magazine. It's a program that informs, educates, and of course, entertains. Also in our show, plans by the government to stimulate the economic performance of the country. Stay with us. Labor Day 2016. For health's sake, keep it clean. Join the cleanup efforts in your community on Labor Day and help to keep the mosquitoes away. Over 1 million people die each year from mosquito-borne diseases worldwide. So destroy all mosquitoes in the gullies, drains, and around your homes. Let's clean up our public spaces and beautify our environment. Register your projects now. Call 978-7654 or email laborday at mcges.gov.jm. Keep it clean. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Thursday, May 12. Government is to establish its first agroeconomic zone in Spring Plain, Clarendon. This will be done through a public-private partnership to process and market agriculture crops. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, J.C. Hutchinson, made the announcement on Tuesday. He was touring the Ebony Park and Spring Plain agroparks in the parish. We're going to have grading, packaging, processing of all crops. We also have this uh, storage facility here, cold storage facility, which is also here. We are going to also be looking, uh, it isn't here, but looking at drying facility and close by for animals, we are going to have to see if we can set up a abattoir. With this, we are going to make sure that all fruits and vegetables that are what we call the C grade and usually stays in the field, that will be brought in here and also processed. We are going to be putting an extension officer specifically in charge of each agropa, where they will be able to provide the technical knowledge to the farmers. Minister Hutchinson said the property which had a large warehouse had been leased by an investor and would provide farmers with a market for their crops once it became fully operational. There are nine agroparks across the island. Funds have been released to repair minor water supply systems in Portland and St. Thomas, which were damaged during recent heavy rains. Local government and community development minister Desmond McKenzie toured sections of Portland on Tuesday and announced the assistance. I have issued instructions that funds be released immediately to the tune of $1.5 million uh, to both the St. Thomas and Portland Parish Councils to try to resuscitate the minor water supply that was affected. Minister Mackenzie said Portland, St. Mary, St. Thomas and Clarendon had proven to be vulnerable to heavy rains and so priority attention would be given to them this hurricane season. We're going to be making an assessment of all four parishes and then where it is necessary we start the mitigation exercise, especially in these four parishes. Government will be engaging Portland residents in two town hall meetings to help inform plans for the second phase of its national cleanup program. The initiative was recently launched in Montego Bay and makes its next stop in Portland in June. Local government and community development minister Desmond McKenzie met with stakeholders to sensitize them about the project on Tuesday. He said assessments would also be carried out by several agencies, such as the Social Development Commission, Portland Parish Council, Fire Department, Parish Development Committee and the Ministry of Health to determine the scope of cleanup. We are expecting the full support of the Parish of Portland in this exercise because over the last couple of weeks 
we have seen where concerns have been raised about the question of not just the Zika, but now we are hearing talks of yellow fever uh, in the news as it relates to these dangerous mosquitoes which carries uh, these disease. Government has begun a series of workshops with residents and stakeholders to unearth economic opportunities and activities for persons who live in and around the Blue and John Crow Mountains. The first workshop, which was held on Wednesday in Kingston, featured representatives from the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, Ministry of Tourism, Jamaica Business Development Corporation and more. Culture Minister Olivia Grange says the goal is to build on the site's inscription on UNESCO's World Heritage List. This effort is to ensure that Jamaica benefits economically from this international designation. The history and current reality of the communities of the Blue and John Crow Mountains point to the need for new and creative approaches founded on the cross-cutting nature of culture and the economic value that must be placed on the products and services created and lived, and I quote, lived within these communities. 30 communities are being targeted in the series of workshops. Interested persons may contact the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport at 9274247 or email awise at mcges.gov.jm. And finally, State Minister of Education, Information and Youth Floyd Green is imploring more corporate entities to invest in Jamaica's education system. There is no successful education model around the world that does not have strong partnership. No government can do it alone. No government can completely fund all the needs of our educational system. Minister Green was speaking at the launch of this year's Sajikor Foundation Adopt a School program. Several schools will receive donations of water tanks, back to school supplies, visual herring and blood sugar screenings, and other financial and infrastructural contributions. We hope with this renewed drive, with this renewed emphasis, that more companies will come on board to do a simple task, which is to adopt a school. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching. Productivity, pathway to prosperity. A message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. The agenda of growth and prosperity is being supported by an estimated expenditure of $12 billion by the Office of the Prime Minister. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation will use $533 million to undertake irrigation, road construction and repairs, as well as $708 million on industrial development, foreign investments and export promotion. Here's more. I'm My dream is to fulfill your dream. We must create a Jamaica where there is hope and opportunity. And so, government has set aside $12.34 billion to see to the proper functioning of the Office of the Prime Minister for fiscal year 2016-17. $3.98 billion has been set aside to cover expenses for the different portfolio areas under the Office of the Prime Minister. $2.3 billion is to cover capital projects. 
$202.5 million of that amount will be covered by multilateral and external agencies. An additional $61 million is expected to be earned with the Electoral Office and Electoral Commission of Jamaica's purchase of a machine to produce identification cards. With a budget of $8.35 billion, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation is projected to spend $5.93 billion to cover housekeeping matters, is to pay workers, accommodate property rental, and facilitate the use of goods and services. The remaining funds will cover costs at NEPA, the Forestry Department, the National Works Agency, and the National Land Agency. The ministry is expected to offset its operations this financial year by $1.69 billion in appropriations in aid. Most of it will come from the operations of the JEEP program, the National Irrigation Commission, and real estate management. The ministry is expected to receive $10.69 billion from multilateral donors. Chief among them is the China Exim Bank, which is pumping $6.9 billion into the major infrastructure for development program, MIDP. It will continue the improvement of the island's road network. The International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, meanwhile, will be funding Jamaica's foundations for competitiveness and growth to the tune of $850 million. Under the program, entities such as Jamaica Promotions and the Development Bank of Jamaica will help to strengthen the enabling environment for competitiveness and unleashing productivity and growth. Increased coordination of urban and rural development is one of the main areas of focus for the Office of the Prime Minister in fiscal year 2016-17. And so, $1.47 billion will go towards the Poverty Alleviation Program. The other big-ticket item, Social Welfare Services, under the Constituency Development Fund will receive $1.33 billion. I will ensure that government is coordinated and strategically directed, that decisions are taken quickly, that targets are set and met, and that the nation is informed as a strategic priority, $36.17 million has been earmarked for the Access to Information Unit to facilitate timely dissemination of relevant and up-to-date government information. This is in addition to the approximately $482 million allocated to the Jamaica Information Service for relocation and equipment acquisition. The Jamaica Information Service is to offset $87.4 million of those costs. The Office of the Prime Minister also has the development of a comprehensive and secure national identification system as one of its priorities for the fiscal year. $20.3 million has been set aside for that purpose, with the Inter-American Development Bank providing $15 million in support. As promised, we have created a Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. It should not come as a surprise that it is in the office of the Prime Minister. It pulls agencies from all over government that are instrumental to growth and job creation. I will be assisted in this super ministry by three ministers without portfolio. The benefit of the ministry, aside from investment and growth promotion activities, will be the central coordination and logistical planning of the growth agenda. And with that in mind, the ministry will be spending over $734 million on irrigation, road construction and repairs, and disaster management. $708.3 million will be spent on industrial development, foreign investment, and export promotion led by Jamaica Promotions Jampro. The majority of the money garnered from donors and multilaterals this year will fund road construction and repairs, the relocation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, and environmental protection and conservation. Included in the road construction is the continued build-out of Highway 2000 with the acquisition of lands along the north to west section of the highway. Rural roads, secondary and arterial roads will also be targeted this financial year. On the relocation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to downtown Kingston, government and the People's Republic of China will be partnering on this project. Our government commits to creating the environment in which families can flourish and form communities of social mobility, from which 
every ghetto youth can be a star. The office of the Prime Minister, driving economic growth while creating jobs. I'm dreaming of a new Jamaica. Preparing for CSEC exams? Visit EL Jam's virtual learning environment for free study notes, videos, and quizzes in 11 subjects. www.elearnjable.org. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, Chikungunya, and dengue viruses. Search for its breeding sites and destroy them. A message from the Ministry of Health. Government has insisted that no child should be out of school because of lack of money. And it's not just talk. Funds are available through the Program of Advancement through Health and Education PATH to support lunch and travel expenses of students. This level of support to the most vulnerable among us means a lot and is well appreciated. But don't take my word for it. Government remains committed to developing our human capital. So much so that the administration has made it a strategic priority. One of the ways it's seeking to improve human capital is by ensuring that all children, especially those at risk, have access to quality education. Its path to doing this is the program of advancement through health and education. Destination is like my goal. I suck Shanae Graham, $37,500. She's a fourth runner-up in this category. And the FAD program has helped extensively in allowing me to achieve my academic goals. Let's make welcome from the Hampton High School, Alexandria Espute. It aids you to move forward. It gives you an upper hand where others might not have had it. Shoma Rice Gilman. Eight distinctions, one credit. That's a total of nine subjects. I have done well due to the PATH program, helping me at school. High achievers from households on the PATH program have benefited from scholarships which were handed out at the fifth staging of the PATH Top Achievers Awards put on by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security on July 9. Forty awardees were recognized for excellence in the Grade 6 Achievement Test GSAT and the Caribbean Secondary Examination Council CSEC for 2012 and 2013. These top achievers gained averages from 96 to 98 percent in GSAT and for CSEC 6 to 11 distinctions. For their hard work, they were awarded cash prizes ranging from $37,000 to $150,000 to further their education. Beneficiaries were proud of their accomplishment, determined to keep doing well, and grateful to government for the chance to achieve their dreams. Chadukia Longley is the 2012 PATH Top Female Achiever. After seven arduous years, I stand here a proud graduate of the Glenmuir High School. I express sincerest gratitude to the Program of Advancement through Health and Education, PATH, for this grand opportunity bestowed upon me to reflect, to celebrate, and envision higher learning. The 2012 Top Male Achiever Award went to another Glenmore High School student, Peter Williams, who attained nine distinctions and one credit. Those taking top honors for 2013 were Kimberly Burnett of Immaculate Conception High School and Othneen Williams of Denby High. They each received a cash prize of $150,000. The GSAT Top Awards went to Colin Rowe and Tayasha James for 2012, while Devin McIntosh and Rodisha Blake copped the main award for 2013. They each earned $80,000. In keeping with the theme, Inspiration Through Transformation, the 2014 PATH Top Achievers Awards also sought to reduce stigma and discrimination against PATH beneficiaries. The Ministry of Labor also used the event to inspire and motivate other PATH beneficiaries to excel. They have helped me to recognize that I have potential and if there's anything that I'm not sure that I like, I sure like being awarded so it has motivated me to continue working hard. The PATH program has paid for my bus fare so now I'm able to attend school regularly so I'm able to 
attend all classes and attending all classes has led, has led me to be as successful as I am now. In ensuring access to quality education through the PATH program, government is building a pool of qualified individuals to take up existing professions as well as create new ones. And this level of investment in human capital development is being embraced by the beneficiaries. The youngsters expressed gratitude, gave advice and spoke of ways to give back to their country. I aspire to become a doctor, not just a normal doctor but an obstetrician. And you might ask yourself, how can this career contribute to Jamaica? I feel that I can contribute to the safe delivery of our future leaders. And in that way, I can also help in the 2030 vision to make this a place of choice to live, work, and to raise a family. The PATH program is a very beneficial um, program to vulnerable students so there are students who are less fortunate and I'm grateful for the opportunity it has it has given me. You will achieve many things while working with PATH. I can see myself as being an upstanding citizen of Jamaica and being a role model for those around me. Tomorrow is not sure. Your child. I am your child. I am your child. I am your child. I am your child. No child is just your child. No child is just my child. Every child is Jamaica's future. Every will come in like a mind. We must do better. We are all our children. The Ministry of Education has recognized that education is not just about being book smart. Developing street smart or well-rounded children is also at the core of its mandate. Through its health and family life education program, children are taught about interpersonal relationships, life or survival skills, and how to manage their problems. Through our guidance program, we teach children also personal development. Um, inter- and intrapersonal relationships. So we seek to give the students the requisite skills to manage themselves and the challenges that they'll face. But the school has long recognized that it has to partner with the home. A parenting policy and program which seeks to assist parents in raising well-rounded children have been developed. A lot of our problems now are coming from the children's inability to cope with some of the, the stress that is coming from the home. So we ask our parents to recognize that there is a gap between themselves right now and the children. Some children are hurting because they do not feel loved and wanted by their family. That needs to change. Exactly. Let them know you're happy to have them around. Even if you as a parent or guardian is having financial problems or otherwise, Talk to the children. They'll understand, don't it? Yes, miss. What we are saying is that our parents need to be listening to their children. They're, they need to be using their eyes and their ears. Look at the change in behavior. Are we talking to the children about what is happening to them as they grow and develop? Talk about their day, from the person who ate pencil shavings to the bully who tried to pick a fight after school. Development changes that take place within their bodies should also be discussed. Question. When it's gonna be my time to shine, I gotta get what's mine. When it's gonna be, a little shine for me. Lyrics and flow I circle the city, because my full of versatility. It's very important to manage your stressor and support is very, very important in managing a stressor. More time just tease me, and more time I just pay it no mind because I know what is right and I know myself. So I don't have to cry over anything they say 
what they say just goes in my ear and just comes out next. I don't business what they say about me. I know who I am and I'm true to myself. Talk to someone you trust, your parents, teacher, pastor or friend. Because talking about the problem helps them to deal with it effectively and also helps them to feel better. No, I don't feel sad when they tease me. I go to the teacher. And then be brave and don't be afraid of them, miss. Take a break from your regular routine. Go for a ride somewhere, go and do something that you enjoy and this will help to break the monotony and help to relieve some of the stresses that you are undergoing. You can also play or exercise. Physical education or PE class is a good way to relieve stress. Listen to music. Do something that you enjoy. Students ages 10 to 15 years with a passion for advocacy and volunteerism. Here is a chance to speak out against child abuse while representing your parish by becoming a child ambassador for the Office of the Children's Registry. Your tenure will run from 2016 to 2018. Once you have good recommendations from your institution in terms of your behavior, your involvement in school, and even if you're not involved within school but you really want to participate in, in helping to bring awareness to your own peers about uh, child abuse, then you can submit an application. Submit applications to ambassadors at ocr.gov.jm or contact the Office of the Children's Registry. Applications close May 15. For health's sake, keep it clean. For health's sake, clean up every gully, every school, every house, every lane. Labor Day 2016, for health's sake, keep it clean. Join the cleanup efforts in your community on Labor Day and help to keep the mosquitoes away. Over one million people die each year from mosquito-borne diseases worldwide. So destroy all mosquitoes in the gullies, drains, and around your homes. Let's clean up our public spaces and beautify our environment. Register your projects now. Call 978-7654 or email laborday at mcges.gov.jm. Keep it clean. We have come to the end of today's show, but don't forget to visit our website, gis.gov.jm, for more updates. And for information on the Program of Advancement through Health and Education, call 922-8000 or visit them at 14 National Heroes Circle. Keep sending your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at gis.gov.jm or tweet us at GIS News. Our team will be back tomorrow with another show. On behalf of the production crew, I'm Audrey Williams. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.